Mages in Fire Emblem are weird. With multiple tracks of spells from wind, fire, thunder elements, plus some light magic and dark magic and other spells like Fimble Vetter. Fimble Vetter? Fimble Ice thrown in for good measure, you'd think there would be enough variety in their spells to make them truly unique. But unlike its Weapon Triangle counterpart, which has stayed the same throughout the series, with some nuances in along the way like in Fire Emblem Fates, the Magic Triangle, or the Trinity of Magic as some games dub it, has had a bit of an identity crisis over the years. Fire Emblem has had four iterations of the Trinity of Magic across the series. Let's go through all four of them and then talk about why they kind of died and why they should honestly stay dead. FE4 and FE5 In FE4 and FE5, they implemented two triangles, an anima triangle of wind beating thunder, thunder beating fire, and fire beating wind, and an overall triangle with light beating dark, and dark beating all anima magics. For the first time in the series, the spells themselves were split from one generalized group of magic to separate elements, and have each niche filled out. In FE4, this created basic spells for fire, wind, and thunder, as well as the L spells, siege tomes in meteor, blizzard, and bolting, and the top end of Bulganone, tornado, and thoron, with the legendary Vol flame, forsetti, and Mjolnir spells capping things off. Light got Lightning, Aura, Nosferatu, and Naga, and Dark got Jormungand, Fenrir, Hell, and Loptis. Thracia kept most of these spells and added a few unique ones and personal spells like Graf Caliber, Poison, and Petrify. In FE4, the balance of spells was pretty iffy. All the basic spells, Wind, Fire, and Thunder, had 8 Might and 90 Hit. But Wind had 2 weight, Thunder had 7, and Fire had 12. Since weight could not be accounted for, this meant Fire's evasion bonus against Wind was nerfed by weight, and Wind was incredibly dominant over Thunder with a 30 point evasion swing. If you were using an anima spell, you wanted Wind. The triangle at a glance is really unbalanced, but within the context of the game itself, it isn't too bad. Fire might suck in comparison, but it's the most available and can be seen as a starter tome, with Thunder coming next and the best type, Wind, coming after that. You can think of the Trinity here being the progression of a single type of damage rather than an actual Trinity, like what Blazing Sword has. But yeah, looking at it plainly, Fire is doo-doo and Wind is very 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 good. As for Light and Dark Magic, none of your units could use Dark except for Salem and Thracia 776. For the few that could use Light, it was almost as light as wind, and far more powerful. Aura was too heavy to double with, but lightning was a lot more useful. Light was awesome, but just wasn't very available. Salem was not remembered for being a powerful dark magic user though, as dark magic was dreadful for its awful hit rate, but Salem himself was a good support unit, and could use animatomes too. The actual matchups of mages if you did get into a magic versus magic situation did lend some value to the triangle though, as the Baron and Master Knight class were built more like physical units, with generally higher defense than resistance, but could still use magic, meaning going mage versus mage was a somewhat common occurrence, especially in the late game with your Forseti user going up against armies of Thoron wielding barons. That said, between Forseti's overkill speed bonus, low weight, and weapon triangle's 20% swing, sometimes the enemies were like, no thanks, and just didn't attack you because their hit rate was literally zero. In Thracia, the balance wasn't much better, and with triangle advantage being only 5%, there was even less reason to use any magic outside of wind and sometimes light. The thing is, wind and light magic are way less common than fire and thunder tomes, so there are reasons to use other magic, including training ranks to use the siege tomes, which could be a lifesaver in later maps. So clearly the trinity of magic wasn't enough to balance the spells by itself. The GBA Era, FE6 to FE8. The GBA games simplified magic by removing the anima split and just having light over dark, dark over anima, and anima over light. This let them introduce spells like Fimblevetter that didn't fit cleanly into wind, fire, or thunder, while trimming spells to keep the spell list tight. And light also got a number of new spells, making the list lightning, shine, divine, aura, and purge. All tome types had their legendary spells too, but these varied in quality from exceptionally strong, like FE8's Excalibur, with plus 5 speed, to incredibly useless, like the 20 weight Gleipnir that wasn't even effective against monsters. As far as balancing went, it felt to me that Anima was always more focused than its counterparts, so I suppose that was a carryover from Yggdral. Anima magic was pretty strong, with a variety of spells of different weights and powers, but light and dark, while also getting more diverse especially in FE7 and FE8, suffered from different problems. Light magic in FE6 had quite a bit less spells than 7 and 8, but 7 and 8 
stacked the weight up of tomes across the board. So while light magic was more diverse in the later games, and making small changes like reducing the might of lightning from 5 to 4, they also made D and A rank tomes in Shine, and reintroducing Aura from past games. There are 6 light slash anima tomes that anyone could use in FE7, but the E to S rank tomes negatively affected light magic way more, both being heavier and less powerful. They do get crit bonuses though, and that's the distinguishing factor between light and anima. Light traded attack speed and might for small boosts in crit rate, so variety wasn't really a problem because it had just as many spells as anima. The problem was, why wouldn't you rather have a more workable weight and higher might over crit chance? By the time you got to aura with its 15 weight, you really had to hope your bishop's stats let them one-shot with a tome. Light magic using enemies were chumps. They were so weighed down by their own low might books that they basically had one shot to not get one-routed by your entire army. Dark was left in a weird place, where all dark spells except for Flux had some special effect. Nosferatu had life drain, Luna ignored resistance, and Eclipse was a long-range tome that dealt damage equal to half the target's current HP. Luna in particular had serious balancing issues, being either incredibly overpowered with its innate 45 crit in FE7, or being incredibly useless after losing all of its crit and most of its accuracy in FE8. Dark Magic also had 7 tomes, but the problem was that number 1, Arash Kigal, was Nurgle only, Gespenst was a literal endgame tome, leaving only Flux, the D-rank tome, Nosferatu's niche uses, and Luna's variable use depending on the game. Dark Magic was better in FE8 though, because summoners existed and had tons more utility than druids at the exchange of stat caps. As far as the trinity itself stacked up, the 15% hit slash avoid and plus 1 or minus 1 damage isn't bad, but with the way mages are built, they all have pretty high resistance and low physical defense. This makes picking a triangle matchup better for using your mages to tank enemy spellcasters and makes Luna Shamans specifically more dangerous against anima mages. In FE6, while Nime and Yoder could function fine as combat units with some stat boosters, Nime with body rings specifically, it was their staff ranks and being pre-promotes that made them stick out more in my opinion. Don't get me wrong though, because despite magic users and the spells themselves being varying quality across all three games, the triangle itself was serviceable. It had its purpose as the resistance-based RPS, but it's clear that it was never going to be as dynamic as the weapon triangle due to how mages were built, with very few exceptions. Let's move on to Tellius, FE9 and FE10. Tellius brought back the anima split while keeping the light and dark triangles, though Path of Radiance didn't include dark magic, so light magic was effective against nothing. Path of Radiance had all the spells from FE4, and Radiant Dawn added the arc tier of fire, wind, and thunder to bridge the gap between L and top tier spells. The anima spells were also given effectiveness against Lagoos. Fire was effective versus beasts, wind was against all flyers, and thunder against dragons. For better or worse, in Radiant Dawn, Wyvern Riders became a Dragon-type class instead of a Flying-type, making Wyverns' weakness go from Wind to Thunder, but this also made them not take effective damage from bows, so Thunder was their only weakness. And thus, Radiant Dawn Har was born. Path of Radiance made Wind light, accurate, and weak. Thunder heavy, inaccurate, and strong with extra crit, and Fire a solid midpoint of the two. Despite all these changes, mages got short straw and Tellius. Granted, magic itself was pretty solid in Path of Radiance, mages there benefited from some good offensive magic. But between knives replacing staves in Path of Radiance's pre-promoted sages, staves being actively detrimental in Radiant Dawn due to them force equipping themselves on enemy phase giving magic users no counterattack, effective damage being only 2x in Path of Radiance, but not only that, it doesn't really matter for fire and thunder because of the scarce amount of times you'll ever use it to your advantage, and wind magic might be effective on flyers, but it's already super weak to begin with that the effectiveness is very marginal. In Radiant Dawn, they have lower movement than all other unit types outside of armors, and they have the same speed cap as generals too. Tomes have incredibly low might, and their only forgeable ones are their basic E ranks. Yikes. In Radiant Dawn, light magic is constantly at a disadvantage to anima, and there's, and I'm not joking, three enemy dark mages in the entire game. While it helps dealing with enemy bishops, this also means that Micaiah is just constantly struggling against mages forever, unless we're talking hard mode, which removes the triangle entirely, making it even more of an afterthought. And finally, Fates. 
Fates didn't have a magic triangle, but they did add tomes into their weapon triangle. Tomes were layered on top of swords, being effective against bows and axes, but weak to hidden weapons and lances. This meant matchups against armor knights and sky knights were made worse. Ninjas were incredibly good against mages, but mages could be a more effective counter to archers and fighters. This in itself was a slightly more interesting variant of mages with more unique interesting matchups against certain unit types, though it's not a traditional magic triangle in the least, with mage tomes being all combined and only dark magic being split off. The trinity of magic hasn't made a true return since the Tellius duology. I hesitate to really call fates part of a trinity since magic was just all magic and not split into different kinds, except for dark, which would make it a binary of magic? So the question is, why? Personally, I think the first reason is that across all three eras of the triangle, magic users are often built pretty similarly, making matchups in the triangle feel a lot less meaningful in comparison to the weapon triangle, which constantly reinforces archetypical matchups. With the weapon triangle, all you need to do is look at the basic types of units that use each weapon type, and you'll see it clearly. Myrmidons beat axe fighters, fighters beat armor knights, and armor knights beat myrmidons. This is a broad view, not accounting for the existence of effective weaponry, but the bonuses from the weapon and triangle really reinforce the elements of these core matchups. Extra hit and avoid makes Myrmidons very effective at taking out fighters and brigands. Extra hit and damage helps fighters take on armor knights, and extra hit and less damage taken helps armors counter Myrmidons. Now look at mages. Wind, fire, and thunder mages have all basically the same stats, and if given the choice between those three types, wind is just better. And in most games with the anima split, most mages can use all three types of anima magic. The slight increase in hit and avoid can be nice, but the extra damage is in significant as an attacker because mages tend to have the highest resistance of any unit on the field outside of maybe clerics and pegasus knights. The utility in the triangle would come through with certain characters like Canis, who had a ton of resistance and dark magic to res tank anime users, but Canis wasn't as fast as a pegasus knight, a melee class that excelled in mage killing due to their high speed, resistance, and targeting of defense, which literally every magic user ever never has. Monks and shamans also don't have significantly different stats from mages either. Sure, your average bishop will probably have more resistance than a mage, and your average shaman will probably have a bit less, but they aren't going to have so little that it's even comparable to the difference between a Myrmidon and an Armor Knight, whose base stats are always completely opposite of each other on purpose. In Radiant Dawn, the Trinity's final go at it it existed but was rendered less useful than one would expect due to other factors going on to make it difficult for mages to even exist. So the next question is, can the trinity of magic come back? Balancing a magic triangle and introducing new effects to light and dark magic to make them more unique than just light heavy but critty and dark heavy but strongy has been shopped around by many many ROM hackers, trying to make their own game and balancing magic in their own way. But at the end of the day, intelligence systems likes to build magic users a certain way, and in Unfortunately for the triangle, the lack of diversity of stats between all magic users makes it so a trinity of magic is just incomparable to the dynamics of the weapon triangle. But after Radiant Dawn's final attempt at it, and after Fates's hybridization of all weapon types, do you want to know what they did with magic instead? Well, in the Switch era, Three Houses just reworked magic as a spell list unique to every magic user in the game. This made every magic user stand out, even some units who aren't innately magic based, to have an identity of their own. Lysithia was the dark and white magic powerhouse, Lindhart was a very very useful healer with support of magic and wind magic as well, Annette was a magic user with a ton of support capability, so on and so forth. Even though all magic users were technically built the same stat-wise, with regards to defense and res, in my opinion it didn't matter because they all had some niche to fill instead. And for Engage, it was a similar thing. All the mages in Engage are squishy, but unlike Three Houses, they didn't have unique spell lists, just traditional tomes. But there actually weren't a lot of dedicated magic users in the playable cast to begin with, which meant more uniqueness across all of them. Saline was a uniquely gifted mage who could use swords. Citrine was your traditional magic user, boasting a ton of offensive power. Ivy was incredibly mobile due to being mounted while sporting strong offensive stats. Hortensia, thanks to her mobility and her personal skill, was the best healer in the game, bar none. Linden, while kind of being super mid in comparison to everyone, had a unique and fun personal skill that let him be flexible into even melee classes. Vale, like Saline, could use physical weapons in the form of daggers alongside magic, and was a dragon type that could make better use of her magic stat than Alir could. Gregory and Zephia were DLC, and while their kits were similar to Citrine and Ivy respectively, they did not invalidate them at all. 
And on top of all of this, emblems and skill inheritance could further flesh out your favorite magic user in all the ways you wanted. A trinity would serve no purpose in either game that already made strides to make magic special. The thing is, the trinity tries to be the weapon triangle, but for mages. But that mindset has never really worked with the way intelligent systems wants to have their mages. In my personal opinion, mages are meant to be exceptional, special units that you get little of. And since there are so little of them in any given game compared to melee users, trying to balance their typing as if they were is a mistake. Mages nowadays are so much fun to use because they're backed and balanced around their own uniqueness. When asked, should the trinity of magic come back, I respond with, why? Why not just continue to make magic cool and unique and completely different from physical weapons? Gaiden and Echoes' magic was very unique and fun. Three Houses was very unique and fun. And Engage magic was very unique and fun. For me, the only reason the Trinity should come back is in the form of a game remake, where they have a chance to either keep it how it works entirely, which is standard I guess, or work them to be more interesting. I just like where magic is going for the series, I think the Trinity of magic is an interesting concept to think about, but with the way IS likes to build mages anyway, is less effective than one may expect. Well everybody, that will do it for today's video on the Trinity of Magic. If you have any thoughts on the Magic Triangle and you want to share them, and if you agree or disagree with any of the opinions shared in the video, please let me know down below in the comments. What do you think of the Trinity of Magic, and do you genuinely want to see it come back? And with that all being said, hope you guys liked the video, please leave a like and comment down below, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, deuces.